Hello once again and welcome to the Amalgamated with Christ Church where the purpose of remains the same to bring people back into fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. And so we want to look at the judgment. Okay, we want to look at the, the judgment. Um, the judgment. What is the what is what is the judgment? What is a judgment? Many people don't even know of such a concept or when they think of a judgment, they only relate that to a legal proceeding, which it is indeed a legal proceeding. It is usually a decision that is handed down in a court of law. Now, during this process, you have, you have um, the judge and those who stand before the judge. And so during this process, you have what is known as adjudication what that really does is to make a formal decision between two parties and so when we talk about a judgment in biblical terms this is a time when mankind will stand before the Lord and when I say before the Lord they'll stand before Jesus Christ himself and they will be judged now, when that time comes, it's going to be a special time. That's what is known as Judgment Day. Now, the Bible speaks of several judgments in the past. You've had several judgments in the past. Okay? The first judgment... The first judgment was recorded in um, Genesis, in the book of Genesis. And that was the judgment of Adam and Eve when they sinned against God. Remember, they were created in the image of God. And then at the fall of man, they sinned against God. And so they were found guilty. And so they were sentenced. Genesis chapter 3 Verse 14, so the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle and more than every beast of the field. And your belly you shall go and you shall eat thus all the days of your life. And then it goes on to say, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And then he said to the woman, I will greatly multiply your sorrow your sorrow and your conception in pain you shall bring for children. Then it goes on to verse 17. Then to Adam he said, Because you have eaten the voice of your wife, you have eaten from the tree of which I command you, saying you shall not eat. Curse is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. So that was the, the first judgment. This judgment saw mankind after the fall standing before God and a formal decision was made to get them out of the garden when that decision was made it was it was made clearly and woman was was, was at that time the sentence was pronounced upon the woman to say listen from now on you will you will give birth and you shall bring forth children in pain the man was tasked to work very hard to toil. Prior to that, there was no toiling and working hard. Or as God would not have said, no one, this will happen. Before that, there was no pain in childbirth. Or as God would have said, something else. And so that was the first judgment. Now, this judgment affected mankind because the sin from that time until now has caused all of us to inherit, that, that action I should say, to inherit the, the DNA of sin. And so that was the first judgment that was carried out. Now, another judgment that was very pronounced was in Genesis chapter 7. In the days of Noah, when mankind 
was, was doing everything and, and disobeying God, partying, giving into marriage, and doing all those stuff, God was very upset with man. And so another judgment came upon the land. Genesis chapter 7. And if you look at verse 17 to 24, it told you, or it, it, it revealed to us that water came upon the hurt, and man was destroyed. Verse 22, all in whose nostril was the breath of the spirit of life, and all was on the dry land died. So he destroyed all living things which are on the face of the earth, both man and cattle, creeping things, and the birds of the air. So that was another judgment that was carried out. Now, in all this, and you have other judgment that, 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 that was mentioned, but we're just, I'm just painting a picture for you to see that judgment is really a formal decision between two parties. And then really, when you think about it in biblical terms, it's going to be a decision that God is going to make that affects us. And it's because of what we do that, that, that is going to determine what will be handed down at our judgment. Each and every one of us will be judged. Now, you know that in both circumstances, the, both, the examples that we gave in Genesis, that God is a righteous judge. You realize that he told man from the get-go what not to do. He told man that if you disobey, if you do this, what the consequences is going to be. It is the same thing today. God has set before us life and death. God has instructed us in no uncertain terms to choose life. But some of us decide to choose death and we will be judged accordingly. Now, Every one of us here on earth will be judged. Every one of us living will be judged. Just like of yesteryear where the saints receive or the older um, uh, in Genesis and Exodus and all the other books, the Old Testament, yet judgment took place there. Now, we're going to undergo our judgment as well. Now, who will be our judge? Who will be our judge? Scripture made it clear that Jesus Christ himself will be our judge. Why? Because the Lord God, Lord, the God the Father, our God the Father does not judge anyone. Right? It says, John 5 verse 22, For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son. So who will be our judge? Jesus Christ himself will be our judge. The scripture tells us in no uncertain terms that the Lord God himself, the Father, judges no one. He has, he has turned over that. That responsibility is going to be Jesus. Jesus is going to judge us. In Revelation chapter 5 and verse, um, verse 5 it says, But one of the elders said to me, Do not we behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll to loose its seven seal. This is a picture of Christ as judge. So you will be judge. Judgment is necessary. Why is it necessary? Why is it that God wants to pronounce judgment on the hurt or on mankind? To teach us his perfection. To, let, uh, to, to teach us his perfection. It is as if you have a child and you say to the child, do not do such. And the child go behind your back and do whatever they want to do. You come home because you're a righteous judge and you're going to say to the child, listen, I told you not to do this. No, you have to pay the consequences. Some people will sit and they will allow people to do all sort of stuff. For example, the government, they will watch you they will watch you participating in illicit activities for years and years and years and years. And then they will build a case against you. And when you least expect it, that is the time when they come and get you. And when they get you and they bring you before the court of law, 
There will be no escape because the case is concrete. It is sealed. And so the judgment, judgment, judgment sometimes takes a time to build. Why do I say that? Because even today, God himself has given us time to repent, to reflect, to escape judgment that will see us in eternal jail, so to speak, or in eternal hell. So I say to you, judgment is necessary to teach us about God's perfection. That is the reason there is a judgment. I want to focus specifically on two judgments that all of us should be very familiar with. And one is the judgment seat of Christ, and the other is the great white throne judgment. These two judgments will affect all of mankind for eternity. The judgment seat of Christ, or the great white throne judgment, will affect mankind for all of eternity. Now, when we speak about the judgment seat of Christ, immediately you should have a picture that Christ himself will be seated on the seat because he will be our judge. As the scripture said, that Jesus Christ himself, well, the scripture said, for the Father judges no one, but has given all that authority to the Son. The Son will be the one to judge us. Now, the judgment seat of Christ, at that very, that time, only Christians will be in that courtroom, so to speak, to receive their judgment. Now, when you speak about the judgment seat of Christ, it is mentioned in Scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So, every believer must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ is also known as the Bema seat. Why? Because in ancient Greece, this was a place of judgment. And in that setting, you had the seat was raised up and the judges would be seated on those seats. So it is also known as a Bema seat. Now, at the judgment seat of Christ, Christians will be judged. Now, resurrected and raptured believers will be judged for their works. Note the scripture says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. So once you're a believer, it means this is talking to you. So whether the believers are the saints of yesteryear, who have died and they've gone on, those that are only sleeping, the scripture says, they will be resurrected and they will be judged. Christians who are taken up in the rapture, they too will also be judged. We will all gather at the judgment seat of Christ. Now, the judgment seat of Christ does not mean that we are gathering there because we are sinners. It's, it does not mean that because there will be no sin in the presence of God. God cannot look at sin. Sinners will be somewhere else. So you're saying then why is it that Christians need to be at the judgment seat of Christ? Why is it that Christians need to be judged? Simple. Because our Christian lives must be examined Totally. You will, be, you will be asked to give an account for the things that you have done or the things that you have not done. You will be examined. All your motives will be carefully examined. Why do I say that? All right, let's go into the scripture. The judgment seat of Christ we speak about. And we say that only believers will be gathered at the judgment seat of Christ. Now, when we gather there... All our works, everything that we have done in Christianity, our motives, everything will be examined very carefully. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Look at verse 12. It says, Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, 
precious stones, wood, a straw, each one work will become clear for that day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone works is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Now, simple. All your motives will be examined. When the scripture is talking about works that's been built on wood, straw, etc., etc., this is what this is what is happening right here. Every selfish desire, everything that you have done wrong, your own motive, the things that you just do for you, and not for the glory of God, not for the edification of the saint, all those things will have to be rid of. All those things will be bring to the fore because your works will have to be examined. It says that it will be revealed by fire and each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. So some people will be receiving reward. Some people will be losing reward. Not because you lose a reward, it means that you're going to be thrown into hell. Does that mean that? Because you're a believer, you're standing there, and when we speak about rewards, we'll go into that another time. We're talking about the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment. At the judgment seat of Christ, it is not to punish you or to cast you out of heaven forever. Instead, it is to further purify you. What do I mean? By ridding you of things that were not done right. So what was done, but was not pure, guess what? It will be removed. And things rewarded for, because they were found to withstand, and because it was glorifying God. So at the judgment seat of Christ, all Christians, resurrected and raptured, will be gathered there. And their works will be examined to say, okay, all right, what did you do? How did you do? Why did you do? Etc. If your work at that time was flawed, then it will be known and you will be, essentially, you won't get any reward. It will be taken away. But you won't be cast out. You won't be thrown into the fire of hell. The judgment seat of Christ is there to examine, examine your life. That's what it is. All things, all things, all things will be looked at. The judgment seat of Christ must comfort us. We shouldn't worry about, oh, at the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to be cast into the hellfire. No, because if you're, standing at the, if you're standing there at the judgment seat of Christ, it's safe to say you won't be cast into hellfire. The judgment seat of Christ must comfort us. Why? Because sometimes in our daily life, even today, Many of us as believers, we stumble. Many of us as believers, we may have some flaws. But God wants us to remember that our stumbling, our stumbling, if we repent, our stumbling, all our flaws will be forgiven at, of us. So you don't worry, you don't dwell and, oh, it's going to get me down. Oh, I'm not going to make it. No, 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 no. Everyone on the judgment seat of Christ will receive eternal life will receive eternal life. Eternal life in heaven. But some will receive more rewards and crown than the other. But all who love Jesus Christ and have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will receive something. What will they receive? Listen. James chapter 1 verse 12. It says right here, Blessed is the man who endure temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Each and every one of us will receive a crown of life, and that is the reason, 
I say to you, do not worry that, oh, I'm going to be cast out. I'm going to be in hell. No. We will go into rewards at a later time. Now, the judgment that we must be terrified of or the judgment that we want to avoid is what is known as the great white throne judgment. That is the one where if you are not found worthy, if you are not found worthy, if you have neglected Jesus Christ, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that's the day you will receive your judgment. You will not be found at the judgment seat of Christ. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne and who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Remember, Jesus Christ will be the judge, right? And there was for no place for them. They must be judged. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were open. And none of the book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. If you continue to read on, it tells us that the, the sea gave up the dead, etc. You read on, the dead and Hades were cast in the fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So the great white throne judgment paints a very vivid picture. Just like at the judgment seat of Christ, when you have those raptured and those and those um, who are dead will be resurrected. Right here, the great white throne judgment. All those who die in their evil scheme. All those who laugh at the church and rejected Christ Jesus. Guess what? There will be a time when they will be, re be, be, be required to stand before God. And so the, the, the great white throne judgment is one that you should, you should avoid. The great white throne judgment is not for Christians. It's for unbelievers. No matter the status in life. Why? Because the scripture says that I saw great and small. In other words, you'll have famous people there. You'll have not so famous people. You'll have people that nobody know. You'll have rich people. You'll have broke people. You'll have people from every walks of life will be standing. And then everyone there will be equal. No matter what their status in life is, they will be equal right there. They will be equal. Now, this judgment, the great white throne judgment, that is the grand finale, so to speak. This comes after Satan himself was cast into the lake of fire by in the dream of John. So this is, the, as I said, the grand finale. Satan and the false prophet and the beast were, were all thrown into the lake of fire. If you read Revelation 20, and if you read from verse 7 to 10, you'll see that they were cast, verse 10, the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So there, they're thrown in, and then guess what? The great white throne judgment for everyone. Listen, Satan and all his people, they're thrown into the lake of fire. And guess what? Then that is the time the great white throne judgment began. After they were thrown in. Right? So all you do, if not for God and not to serve and to honor God, will be null and void because you will be at the great white throne judgment. So today I say to you, you do not want to end up at the great white throne judgment. You want to end up at the judgment seat of Christ. Because that is where believers will stand. So all you do, as I said, if it's not for God, is null and void. And God knows every one of us and knows our heart, knows our intent. He knows it. And that is the reason you would be rewarded accordingly. And many people are doing things and believe that they are not being seen. Okay? They believe that they are not being seen. Psalm 28 verse 4. It says, Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavor. 
Give them according to the works of their hand. Render to them what they deserve. And if you read in verse 5, it says, Because they do not regard the works of the Lord. They do not. And so people today, they don't regard God. And they will be rewarded according to their work. And there is only one reward for people who do not reward, who do not regard God. And that is the lake of fire. That's where everyone will be. Now, I want to show you something right here. At the great white throne judgment, many people are saying, well, um, maybe you will have some Christians standing there as well. Some people are saying that, but they will be spared because, and they look at this portion of scripture right here. They use Revelation 20 and they use verse 12 and it says, I saw dead, the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were open. One, the book of life, right? The book of life was open, and other books were open. And, there, and it, then it said, if anyone's name is not found written in the book of life, which is verse 15, they'll be cast in the lake of fire. So that's the reason some people are saying, wait a minute, believers who did not get the chance to be raptured, they're going to be there as well, but when the books are open, their name will be written there. So people use that portion of scripture to say, oh, wait, wait a minute, there's still some hope. Then people also use a portion of scripture in the book of Matthew, when Jesus talked about separating um, the sheep and the goat. So people use that to say, wait a minute, we're going to have some Christians there, but they will be spared. But I would I would I wouldn't run that risk. I wouldn't wait. I wouldn't want to be say, you know what, this is no, 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 no. So the other portion of scripture that people use to say that Christian may still have a chance is Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to 46. But I look at verse 21. It says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all holy and angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. And then it says, all the nations will be gathered before him. Then it says, he will separate them one from another as sheep, as the shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And they are saying, he set the sheep on his right hand, but the goat unto the left hand. Right? And then people look at verse 46 and they say, look here, it says, and these will go away into everlasting punishment, meaning the goats. That's what people are saying to say, the judgment seat of Christ, you'll have this and that, that, that. But I, I, I caution you, I caution you as believers, strive to be at the right place. Strive to be, strive to be at the judgment seat of Christ and not at the great white throne judgment. Because you may just think that you make it. And then when the books are open, your name it's not found there. But if you end up at the judgment seat of Christ, well, at least your Christian life will be examined. And if there is any little work in there that does not belong there, it will be removed and it will be destroyed. Because you must be pure. You must be purified. So now, I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters, I'm just giving you an example of why some would believe that um, there's going to be hope at a great white throne judgment, but I'm not here to debate that. I'm not here to tell you about, wait for that. I'm here to say that you do not want to end up at a great white throne judgment. That's not where you want to be. You want to be at the right place, at the right time, with the right set of people, and that is the believers. Now, the Old Testament saints, people ask, will they be judged? People are saying, well, you know, what about Adam and Eve and all those people? And, you know, because remember, there was a judgment before. So let's see what the scripture is saying about Old Testament saints. You got, you got a lot of Old Testament saints and prophets. So we'll just look at um, two profound um, saints. Let's look at Enoch and Elijah. Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, right? You read everything about Enoch in 5. Come down to verse 24. And it says, And Enoch walked with God, 
and he was not for God took him. So Enoch was taken from the earth right into the presence of God. He was taken up there. Now, we also mentioned, I also mentioned Elijah. Right? That was another a, a saint that um, was, was taken. Elijah was taken. Enoch walked and the Lord God took him and he was no more. Right? And we're, why am I going into this? Because we, people, people like to ask sometime about, are they going to be there? Uh, uh, you know, some people sing about they want another Moses and, uh, and all those stuff. And some people, people sing all sort of stuff. Right? But look at, look at Second Kings. This is Elijah. Second Kings 11. It says, Then it happened as they continued on, on and talked. That suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind, where? Into heaven. So here are two examples where we have two Old, Tes two Old Testament saints that were just taken and gone right into the presence of God. So I do not believe that, based on what I read here, that you'll see Elijah... Or Enoch and any of those judgment. And furthermore, Christ came way afterwards. So I wouldn't even I wouldn't even dig too deep into who will be there. I want to make sure that I am there. And I want to caution you that you should be there. Some people question whether or not. If Solomon is going to be there because he had sinned. The scripture didn't tell you whether or not he repented. People said, well, is Adam and Eve going to be there because they have sinned? The scripture didn't give you any details about whether or not they're going to be there. I tell you one thing that the scripture do tell you about. About Christians will be there and unbelievers We'll be there. So I wouldn't worry about the Old Testament saints because if they are really, if there were really prophets, which there were true prophets, then you don't have to worry about seeing them at the great white throne judgment if there were to be at any judgment period. Because they have done their work. And if God took a man like Enoch and Elijah straight up. There were no works for God to examine because they walked before God. God saw them. God took them. And no sin can stand in the presence of God. And if God took them, it's safe to say that they were pure enough for God to say, come on up. So, the Bible does not tell us much about the Old Testament um, saints and people in the Old Testament and the judgment. But we know that um, for us here today, we must worry about our judgment that is to come. That's what we must worry about. Worry about us getting into heaven. Don't go into debating whether or not who will be there. Don't even worry about... If your mother will be there, or your father will be there, or your grandma will be there, or who will be there. You worry about you being there. Because that ju the judgment will determine where you will be for everlasting life. If your works is not to any it doesn't is is not good. If you, if you have rejected Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then I say to you, you will be in the wrong place, but at the right time. Not the wrong time, at the right time. Because God is a, is a righteous judge. And the scripture tells us that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if you diligently seek him, mean you love him with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul, then you're going to do what is right. And when you do what is right, you will be rewarded with eternal life.
So if anyone is, is, is two timing or shaky, it's time for you to shape up, understanding that at this judgment, the great white throne judgment, that is one that is reserved for people who hate God, people who disobey God, people who do as does not, does not desire a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So my brothers and sisters, now is the time to make a choice when you're alive. Which is it, which is it going to be? Is it going to be heaven? Is it going to be hell? You choose. In Jesus' name, amen.